to Mecca once more. The last six episodes that I have just done with Korede, I did in Nigeria about two weeks ago. Now that they're all up there, I did them in segments because two hours is just too much for people uh, to look at, and so I was asked to do them in segments so people so they're biteable and so they're easy to digest, things like that. So I've done that. We're now going into the Q&A. People have been putting up comments. Thank you for the comments. It's good to be able to get this type of feedback, this uh, type of peer review. And there haven't been really many questions, not really serious questions. Oh, the Muslims have been sitting there and yelling and hollering and screaming and making all kinds of ad hominem against me and everything else uh, that they think that will get us off uh, get the, our attention off of what we're doing. And I think that's the only reason why you're getting an awful lot of this ad hominem. Muslims, when they don't have an answer, uh, usually attack the person or uh, don't even attack with the idea. They just attack, 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 and they make all kinds of ridiculous statements. And you're seeing that in the comments here. But there have been good some good comments. And here is one especially. This is an interesting one put out by Falconoji. I don't know how to pronounce that, Falcon Nauj or Nauge 4.0. Whoever you are, I wish I knew you because you've got an amazing overview. And he did a terrific overview a number of days ago, last week. And he asked the question, why if so many great empires and great peoples who are in the same area that Mecca existed or surrounding Mecca, and they go back for millennium. If all these people are able to keep records of their own empires and their own civilizations, and we have an enormous amount of records from them, archaic records, then if they could do it, why couldn't the Muslims do it? Why couldn't the Arabs do it? And more importantly, if Mecca is this important, and believe me, it is important for every Muslim, you have to go to Mecca because Mecca is where it all began, according to your traditions, your 9th and 10th century traditions. Adam and Eve sent down there. That was the beginning of mankind. The first hamlet, the first settlement of mankind is or was Mecca. There's nothing earlier, nothing earlier than Mecca, according to your traditions. Again, your traditions. Abraham, chapter 21 of the Quran, is very clear that he was... We don't know that it's Mecca, but all the traditions say that is Mecca, the Kaaba. That all the traditions say there is only one Kaaba, and the Kaaba is in Mecca. They don't even take into consideration the traditions that there may be other Kaabas, but nonetheless, all the traditions are very clear. Abraham was there in 1900 B.C. They don't say 1900 B.C. We say 1900 B.C. You've got to come back to the Bible to get that date, because that's the only one. We're the only ones that really have shown where Abraham was in history. And certainly... All the traditions, all the traditions, bar none, start from the premise that Muhammad was born in Mecca, 570 A.D., lived there up until 622 A.D. So for 50 years, the first 50 years of his life, the first 10, 12 years of his ministry, if that started in 610, the first 12 years of the Quran being revealed to him were all in Mecca. We're all in Mecca. And it was only in 622 that he finally then moved up to Medina in the north. Well, not really north, just northwest, sorry, northeast of Mecca. And all of the trade routes, this is another thing that every one of the traditions assume, that Mecca was a center of trade. Mecca was where all the traders came through. Muhammad was a trader. He went up to the north. Some say, uh, some traditions say that he took a trip up as far as Gaza in the north on the Mediterranean. So certainly it was the center of trade, north, south, east, and west. That's what the traditions say. Now, we've debunked so much of that in these past videos. Have you noticed that? We debunked the trade route theory of Montgomery Watt. We've debunked any notion uh, that there was a Mecca that was on any maps. You can't find it anywhere on any maps. Not until 900 AD. <laughs> Muhammad supposedly died in 632. So you can see that's enormous. That's 270 years later that you finally get it imprinted on a map. Difficult for Muslims to know what to do. Difficult. What Fulkanagi says here, and I love what he has done, so I'm just going to read it. Normally, I'd like to read it and then come back on it. I don't think I need to say any more, but what I'm going to do, 
Fulgenager, in writing this out, he goes and he shows all the different empires, but as you're reading it, you don't know where these empires are. So I'm going to put it on a map. And as I read it, follow and see what he is saying. He's done a great job. Thank you, Fulgenage, for what you've done. And this is what he says. I'm going to show you a few examples of many older empires. There are many more that I could show. It is impossible to imagine a city like Mecca. So there's Mecca. Let's put it on the map. And it claimed that it has the longest life in the history of the Arab cities, unless you are you have a record. In this case, the region was also well documented for cities that only lasted a few centuries. However, there was no record of a city called Mecca. So what he is saying is, there's lots of documents for Taif. We have references to Taif just southeast of Mecca. We have references to Yathrib just north of northeast of Mecca. We have references to Khaybar, to Tabuk, to Gaza in the north, to Nazaran and Sana in the south. All of these places that are on the the western uh, plateau the, uh, of the trade route. There, there's references after references. We can get all kinds of references to these, but no reference to Mecca. Small kingdoms south of Mecca have been documented with great accuracy in the ancient history of Arabia, but Mecca has no record to support the Islamic claim of its ancient ex existence, according to Falkenhag. And he goes on, he says, the, the kingdoms of Saba, let's put Saba on the map. See where Saba is? Way down in the south. And also the kingdom of Himyar, way down in the south, in what we know as the Hadramat area, that, that period in the 7th century present a series of 102 kings who lived in the, up to the 9th century B.C. 9th century B.C.? 9th century, that's 1,000 B.C. That's, that, that is a good 16 to 1,700 years before the time of Islam. They began and ended from the 9th century B.C. all the way up into the 6th century A.D. This is proof that Mecca did not exist in ancient times. If it had existed, it should have had archaeological records for every generation of its history. The history of the ancient cities of the eastern and western Arabia. Let's put eastern Arabia up there. You can see there's the eastern coast and western Arabia. Western Arabia actually covers Mecca. These existed for many millennia before Christ and even date back to the time of Abraham. It contains numerous archaeological finds that reveal their story. We have all kinds of history from both the west coast and east coast of Arabia, he's saying. But they also prove that Mecca could not have existed in Abraham's lifetime without such records, because these records say nothing of Mecca. Though they even cover where Mecca exists, they don't have any record of Mecca. The patriarchs, look where the patriarchs are, and I'll put them here on the map, that, who lived near Abraham never mentioned a trip by Abraham to the unknown desert of Western Arabia during his lifetime. <clears throat> Yet all the traditions say that Abraham came down to Mecca, and that he was went into Mecca and went into the Kaaba and destroyed all the idols and then rebuilt the Kaaba with his son Ishmael. That's according to the Islamic traditions from the 9th and 10th century. Volkanaga goes on and says, Neither any of the inspired prophets in the Bible nor any literature of Abraham's descendants mentioned such a trip. Although kingdoms and civilizations were few and in the time of Abraham, and their inscriptions proved that they were known by to one another, none of them mention Mecca. None of them mention Mecca. Then he goes on and says, the inscriptions of the Himyarites, Himyarites. Let's look and see where the Himyarites are. And they're right down, not too far from what or was we mentioned as Himyar or Saba. They're there in the Handramat in what is today Yemen. Take a look and see on the map there. They occupied the area where Mecca was later built, confirm, and they occupied the area where Mecca was later built, confirmed that Mecca did not exist during the 3rd century AD. So the Himyarites moved all the way up the west coast, up to where Mecca is today, but no reference. It is illogical that all the nations occupying central West Arabia would overlook Mecca if it existed when these nations existed. If it was that important, if it was that old, if it was that famous, why did none of these empires, these peoples, why did they not mention this place called Mecca? Look at the map. Look at the map again. 
They're all surrounding. They also include where Mecca is. Let's continue on. Falconasha then says, the Assyrians. Well, look where the Assyrians are, the way up north up there. And the Babylonians, right next to them. In fact, they, they almost call it interlock because they have many of the same cities. They all had ancient empires that occupied the north and also central West Arabia. Let's put central West Arabia up there. Take a look at it on the map. Yet none of them mentioned the existence of Mecca. Not one. Remember, these Babylonians, these Assyrians, we know that later on the Sassanians, who then take over that area of what is today, what was then Babylon and what was Assyria, the Sassanians, who then continue and they, they take over over to the east of that, and they have Stesiphon, which is now today called Baghdad, but back then called Stesiphon, and they, they sent these explorers, to, and they come all the way down to what is today Yathrib, and they find silver there. Dr. Robert Hoyland talks about them coming all the way down to Yathrib, and they create silver mines. And they talk about Taif, and they talk about further north in Tabuk and Chaiba, but they don't refer to Mecca. So these are people that are there in the Assyrian, the Babylonian period area, and what is today where Baghdad is situated. None of them mention Mecca. Mecca is absent from the Assyrian political or military and commercial scene, while other tribes of Western Arabia are mentioned in the Assyrian records. Mecca, if it existed at the time of Sargon II, who is Targon II? Remember who Sargon II is? He is the one that is Korsabad. Korsabad is way up in the Assyrian Empire that you see here on the map. Korsabad, he is the one that comes down to Israel and he attacks the ten northern tribes of Israel and he decimates those ten northern tribes, take many of them back up to his cities up there in Assyria and leaves and takes some of his own Assyrians to repopulate the cities and they intermarry with the Israelites that are left behind. And from their progeny come what is today known as the Samaritans. So we know who Sargon II is. We know when he lived. We know when he did this. We know where he came from. All of this, uh, Falconaji is saying, we, these are people in history. Sargon II would have been mentioned with the various Arab tribes, including Saba, all of which were mentioned in the inscriptions of that period. Mecca was absent from the military, trade, and religious scene, even during the time of Sennacherib, who was his son, who came and then tried to attack the tribe of Judah and was not able to destroy Jerusalem. In fact, had to suddenly leave in the middle of the night and return back, back to his town of Nineveh. He had to go back and defend his city of Nineveh. So you have these great Assyrian kings, Sargon II, Sennacherib, even Ashurbanipal, Fulkanaga continues, had many contacts with Arab tribes and had reached the Taima, Taima area. Look and see where Taima is on the map. There it is right there, north of Medina, north of what was then, of course, Yathrib. Yet Mecca is absent from the Assyrian records, speaking about him. Nabonidus occupied the cities of the region near Mecca. Although he lived in Taima for 10 years, he never mentioned Mecca. Nabonidus is the time of Daniel. This is why it's so important that we look in Daniel and we don't see any reference, anything from any of the Nabonidus drum or Nabonidus cylinder, all these great pieces of art, that of documents that we have today. There's no reference anywhere of Mecca in any of them. And then Falconage goes on to the Persians. Look where the Persians are, over to the east, what is today Iran. The Persians occupied many parts of Arabia and had alliances, had alliances with tribes and states, but Mecca is absent from their records. Finally, he re refers to the Romans. The Roman expedition to Western Arabia, they precisely documented all the villages and towns in the region. I've been talking about that. Uh, Dionysius is one of them who then refers to that as the Greek who the Romans then take and then take his material and then uh, refer to all the different towns along the western coast of Arabia. Their work shows that Mecca did not exist in the Christian era, and in the first century, up until the first century AD, great empires stretching for millennia or more occupied central West Arabia and mentioned the tiny villages. They mentioned the tiny little villages, but they did not mention Mecca. How can Muslims ignore the record of these great empires? Fulkanage finally concludes. And that's the question we need to ask you Muslims. 
Let's look at the map again. Take a look at that map. Look at all those empires. We have records from all those empires. And those empires go all the way back to the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, up until the 9th century BC. 9th century BC. Why is it they have records and you don't? Why is it that their records don't show anything about Mecca, but yours do? Why is it that those records continue from the 9th century BC all the way up until the 6th century AD, and yet there is no record? There is no record of the city Mecca, the greatest city, the oldest city, the supposedly the, the center of history, the center of mankind, and yet there is no record of it. Muslims, you've got a problem here. Because if Mecca does not exist prior to the writings of the traditions, the 8th and 9th and 10th century, if Mecca really doesn't exist on any map until the 10th century, then I would suggest that your traditions are in error. But not only are your traditions in error, so is your Quran in error, because your Quran is assuming that Mecca is there. Though it only mentions it in one place, in chapter 48, verse 24, it still assumes uh, that where this man was and where this revelation of the Quran was revealed to him and where he lived for the first 50 years of his life would have been in Mecca. And yet, if we can't find it, that not only destroys your traditions, it also eradicates any historical authority for your Quran. Talk about the holes in the classical narrative. Your classical narratives, we're finding hole after hole after hole after hole after hole, and this is probably one of the biggest holes. Because I am not saying anything here that is a Christian polemic. It is not me, a Christian J. Smith, who is attacking the Quran because of what I see in the Quran, or what I see in Muhammad, or what I see in his life, or what I see in his empire, or what I see in the history that I disagree with, because as a Christian, I'm just asking a simple historical question. Where is your city? Where is this city that is at the seat of civilization, that was at the beginning of time, that was created, that were the greatest of all the great patriarchs, someone like Abraham of his ilk, and the greatest, according to you, the greatest prophet of all time, Muhammad himself. Where is the city that he was born in? Where is the city that he grew up in? Where is the city that he spent the first 50 years in? Where is the city that he finally conquered in 630? Where is the city where all the mosques are supposedly pointing to? You've got a problem. It just doesn't exist. None of the civilizations knew about it. Nobody before the time of the Abbasids, or maybe even the Umayyads, knew about this city. I'm waiting, and I will continue to wait. You're, the onus is on you now, Muslims. You've got to provide some evidence for your city, because without Mecca, you don't. Pretty much, you don't have Muhammad. Without Muhammad, you pretty much don't have the Quran. Without the Quran, what do you have left? Nada. Nothing. Let's see what you can come up with. Respond to these questions. Show us Mecca. Prove to us it is historical. Give us some inkling that your traditions are true, or even that your Quran is true. Because if you cannot, then you might as well give up on the Quran and Muhammad. You might as well give up on Islam and come on home. God bless you. This is Jathan. Over now.